Fueled by the urgency of World War II, the Manhattan Project embarked on a mission to build the world's first atomic bomb. While an initial design, codenamed Thin Man, ultimately proved impractical, it provided valuable insights that led to the success of the first atomic bomb. In 1942, before the Manhattan Project officially started, physicists were already brainstorming ways to build the bomb and discussed several designs. A straightforward gun-type design was favored, which involved shooting a plutonium bullet at a larger plutonium target. Forcing them together would create a critical mass and trigger a nuclear explosion. Another scientist, Richard Tallman, proposed a different approach, an implosion bomb. Here, explosives would compress a core of fissile material, achieving critical mass and a more powerful explosion. However, this design was considered much more complex. Robert Oppenheimer, director of the Manhattan Project, reviewed the options in early 1943 and prioritized the gun-type design. However, he also authorized a smaller team to work on the implosion design. While an implosion-type bomb was considered more efficient, the gun-type bomb was assumed to be simpler and surer, and received the bulk of the research effort. As work on the gun-type and implosion-type designs began, they were code-named Thin Man and Fat Man, respectively. These names came from Robert Serber, a physicist working on the project, and were based on their designs. The name for Thin Man, a long and narrow device, came from the detective novel The Thin Man by Dashiell Hammett and a series of movies by the same name. The name for Fat Man, a round and bulky device, came from actor Sidney Greenstreet's character from the movie The Maltese Falcon. A cover story devised by the U.S. Air Force involved using the code names for President Franklin Roosevelt, the Thin Man, and U.K. Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the Fat Man. As work began, several challenges arose with the Thin Man design. The gun-type design of Thin Man involved firing a plutonium bullet into a separate plutonium target to trigger an explosion. However, researchers found that the bullet needed to reach incredible speeds before reaching the target to prevent a premature detonation. The bomb's aerodynamics were also problematic. Early models dropped from planes behaved erratically, spun, and broke apart. Additionally, the sheer size of the Thin Man made it impossible to fit inside bombers. But the most significant issue arose in April 1944. Scientists discovered that the plutonium being produced for the bomb contained impurities, specifically the isotope plutonium-240. This isotope readily undergoes fission, meaning it is prone to spontaneous explosions. In the Thin Man's design, the plutonium would pre-detonate before achieving critical mass, rendering the bomb useless. The plutonium-240 realization posed a critical problem and forced a change in direction. By July 1944, Thin Man was halted. Resources shifted to the Fat Man project, but a small team remained on the gun-type design. Using highly enriched uranium fuel, a redesigned Thin Man was developed. This shorter design, now able to fit inside bombers, was renamed Little Boy. However, enriching uranium took a lot of time and energy. Material for one device was ready by August 1945, and enough for a second was not expected until December. The pieces of Little Boy were shipped to the Pacific in July of 1945. While these components had been tested individually, the only test of these weapons, the Trinity nuclear test on July 16, 1945, had been done with an implosion-type device. On August 6, 1945, the little boy was dropped over Hiroshima. The untested gun-type device fell for 44.4 seconds before sensors triggered its detonation. While less powerful than the Fat Man, which would be dropped on Nagasaki three days later, conditions resulted in the little boy causing significantly more damage and destruction.